Gabriel, and I'm an 11th grade student here at St. Chinese Chuan Secondary School. Uh, my personal connection with English uh, is pretty weird, as uh, I have never been learning English at school myself. Uh, my, in my primary school years, I was focusing mainly on German, and uh, I did not have any affiliation with English. However, later on, I did de develop like an interest towards the language itself, and from there on, uh, everything just progressed. Uh, um, no, nowadays, I'm really fond of it. I have uh, just done my final examinations in English, and I think they turned out pretty well. And now, now I'm here to help you guys uh, when it's your turn to write your own. Uh, the topic I choose, chose is politics and society, as, uh, it is, as it is a topic that's really close to me. Uh, I have always been interested in uh, socio-political changes in our everyday lives and just uh, eco-politics or globalization or anything, uh, anything related to that. So that's why I'm here and presenting this. So let's start with what are politics? Well, politics uh, is a very diverse term. It can mean a lot of things. It usually means actions undertaken by the government or politicians or even activists in order to uh, have a say in, in a state's decision making. Uh, they, they, usually, they usually try to uh, uh, win over people with their opinions and uh, these opinions often collide with each other and are subject to many controversies and arguments and people are trying to debate whether their opinion or the uh, opponent's opinion is superior. So, what's the importance of involving yourself in politics and in political discussions? Well, first of all, politics uh, decide, decide a lot of things in your lives. Back in the Middle Ages, it did not really matter whether you were ruled by this king or another king. You were just a simple peasant, peasant who paid taxes. Maybe during wars it, it could have mattered, but otherwise it, it wasn't really a hot topic. But nowadays, it does decide everyday life. Uh, politics are present everywhere, and they are always being talked about, and we just cannot ignore it. Wherever we look, we see politics, global politics, internal politics, controversies controversy regarding a person, and we really cannot get over it. Uh, basically, uh, in order to express your opinion, uh, you must vote in, the, in national or constituency or European parliamentary elections. Uh, if you do not vote in these, you will miss out, uh, miss out on expressing your opinion, and the results may uh, be something that you will disagree with, and you will have no say in the country's future. That's why uh, it does matter if you vote. There's this uh, very wrong sentiment or mentality among people that one vote cannot change the outcome of elections, and it's just plain wrong. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, while one vote technically does not change an election, uh, if everyone thought like that, they wouldn't, nobody would go out to vote, and the result would, sh would surely be very abstract and uh, not what, we used, what we're used to, and that's why it's really important to, to say your opinion. And it also helps expand your worldview because, uh, as I said, everything, everything involves politics. You may meet uh, new people who express the same worldview or you will argue with someone that's, uh, that's on a different opinion than you and you will have to try to understand where they're coming from as well. And it kind of just broadens your mind and your knowledge when you're participating in these discussions. And who knows, maybe in the future you will become an activist of a group yourself, so.
your right to vote comes with adulthood. Uh, therefore, when, therefore, when you turn 18, which is the uh, age of maturity in Hungary, you will be eligible to vote. Uh, you will also be required to have Hungarian citizenship, and you must not have a court judgment uh, prohibiting you from voting in elections. But hopefully nobody from us has that. Uh, you will also become an eligible candidate, uh, but it also has uh, other uh, requirements, so that, such as you need to gather 500 supporters in order to run for election, uh, local, local elections of course, uh, which can be, pro which is proven to be tough, however, activism, uh, you, you can pretty much build your way up the political ladder and gain some fame yourself and that's how you will be become known to the populace. The voting system in Hungary is a mix of two uh, 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 voting systems that are widely used in the world, which is the proportionist system and f the first past the post system. Uh, these are usually uh, used in Western countries such as the US or the UK, while in Hungary we try to combine these things in order to, uh, in order to, for it to be fair and free. However, still many, many many people consider this to be not, not as uh, efficient as other ones. Uh, you, you will be voting anonymously and mo most importantly directly for the candidate when, you're, when, you're, when you enter the vote, voting booth and uh, you won't face any repercussions or discrimination for whoever you're voting for since nobody will know unless you tell them. Uh, pretty much uh, you will get a letter from the uh, Hungarian Election Committee uh, informing you where you can cast your vote in your constituency, which uh, differs. Uh, for, I don't really know where my uh, uh, location will be, but I'm looking forward to, know, uh, to getting to know it. <laughs> uh, and basically that's about it, other than the fact that um, uh, we, are, we have uh, two sheets of paper that uh, uh, a person will uh, go into the water boot will get, uh, which is the uh, constituency uh, voting uh, paper and the nationwide list. Uh, you can vote on both, uh, and uh, your constituency uh, votes will decide whether, for example, if a party wins in Chopron constituency with 16% 16, uh, 16, of the vote, then, they will, then uh, the given political party will gain a seat in the parliament. And in the nationwide list, uh, it is proportionate. Therefore, uh, the seats are given according to uh, how, much, how many percenta percentages uh, a given party gets. So let's let's say that um, so let, let's say that uh, uh, a, a given party wins most of the uh, constituency seats. Then they will basically gain a majority already since uh, these seats constitute uh, uh, 106 uh, parliamentary seats, while the nationwide list only gives out uh, 93 seats. Uh, this is an example of a voting ballot for the EP election. You can see you can vote for uh, the different parties here and uh, they will tell you who the candidate is and uh, they will also tell you every, every other basic information that you need to know. Of course, they don't offer you, offer you descriptions. Uh, it is uh, pretty much, uh, it is not required, but it is advisable that you look up the parties before voting. <laughs> So, what are political party, parties? Not that we, not that we have mentioned parties, uh, Hungarian par parties in particular. Let's see what it actually means. Uh, parties are uh, groups that are made by uh, 
made by pe people who try to represent uh, their worldview and therefore can run for election or uh, can just try to uh, gain more attraction among the populace by being present. Uh, where do political parties come from? Well, uh, the first mention of, uh, of uh, things that uh, slightly resemble parties were from ancient Greece. As we all know, Athens had, uh, the, had uh, while, while not very, uh, while not very, while, while a very fragile form of democracy, they still had democracy and uh, some people did try to form groups in order to run for certain offices. Uh, but, the, but it's really a modern invention uh, and it, it came with the modern world as democracy prevailed around the world. More and more movements were formed into parties to better represent uh, what, they, uh, what they are fighting for. And uh, a lot of parties were made, uh, conservative parties or liberal parties and just everything you can imagine from every political ideology. So there are many forms of parties uh, which constitute the ma majority of the political life in a given country. Uh, they are called the major parties and there are also minor parties which uh, do not have a significant effect on political life. There are also two other forms of parties uh, which are prevalent, especially in today's world, which, uh, the first of which is fake parties, uh, which is used to launder money. And there have been controversies regarding this in uh, previous elections as well. And the other form is joke, joke parties, such as uh, the two-tailed dog party. Uh, it is often made to make a parody out of the given country's political situation and sometimes they offer free beer. And now, Hungarian political parties. Well, you can see this is the National Assembly as of 2021. It has slightly changed uh, since the 2018 elections but you can still see the majority of the parties. Here you can see uh, Fidesz, here you can see MSP, and uh, based, this is the LMP group with many different fractions as uh, there have been many controversies regarding this party. Well, who can I really vote for? Well, there are 25 official parties uh, re registered by the Hungarian Election Committee. Uh, of which only about 10 to 11 parties hold a significant voter, ba uh, uh, voter base and are considered to be uh, more legitimate parties. Uh, but out of those uh, 11, 11 ones, there are only eight which have parliamentary presence. Uh, and th and th that's because uh, some parties have not not have not met the electoral threshold that is set for each party. Uh, in order to get into the parliament, you must get 5% of the vote. Uh, that, that doubles if you run in a coalition of two parties, and if you run, a, run, a, run as a coalition of three parties, then it will further go up by 5%, and if it's four parties, then 5% then again, and uh, the cycle continues. There are also uh, minority representation in Hungary, according to the latest minority laws, uh, which are pretty up to date. According to this, uh, if a minority party uh, uh, gets about 0.26% of the votes from international actions, they are eligible to gain a seat in the parliament. And that's how the German organization in Hungary did gain a seat, which is uh, located here. Exactly, exactly there, and uh, and we are and some some people also choose them as alter alternatives. Uh, we have seen in many cases that people just vote vote for these either for as a joke or because they disagree with the entirety of the electoral system. Not that we have covered this, uh, let's see the impact of politics on modern society. 
Well, with globalization being ever so present uh, and uh, global and global politics being being very influential to the world, that that even a uh, stock market crash in a far away economic center like New York will cause uh, economic depression at home. It is uh, it is true that we are very intertwined as uh, as a global society. Um, Pretty much uh, this uh, a part of it is due to the internet, which uh, also made global trends uh, dominate over na national trends in some cases. And they, also, and they basically gathered the international populace together uh, and that's, that's how they, uh, their like, nationalities are fading and more and more people are become, becoming more intertwined with each other. There have all been also new forms of political trends uh, going on lately. Um, these can be traced back to decades or even centuries, but they have gained tractions, traction just now. Uh, let's just see, uh, let's just, let just see three examples. Uh, one of them is populism, for example, which has been on the rise in many nations uh, around the world, such as Brazil or India. I will cover that later on. Um, then there's identity politics, which is uh, really a great part of our lives nowadays and such a huge uh, socio-political topic that everyone talks about and everyone disagrees with everyone. It just, uh, it's just a complete mess. And then there's green politics, which uh, are aimed at saving the environment and, uh, uh, and with global warming becoming ever so worse and uh, just worsening day by day. And in years, it will become revert irreversible. Uh, it is really a movement that is that has been gaining more and more traction as people are waking up and uh, trying to save the planet from from doom, basically. You can see one of the uh, climate protests which have also been going on uh, in the past decade, which uh, is really a new thing in the 21st century and uh, in the history of humanity as a whole because we were never so, uh, we were nev never so uh, against, uh, ag against uh, globalization and uh, things that pollute the world and, uh, and we're trying to save it, or at least a portion of the population is. Now, now that we covered uh, uh, political ideology, which are green politics, Let's see the basics. So what are political ideologies? Well, there's a basic spectrum called the left and right spectrum with the centrists sitting at the middle who are either moderate left, uh, moderate right, or either just sitting, sitting in the middle. Uh, they, work they, they work like, uh, they work as a basis on uh, how, how people will identify their politics as and their ideology as. However, uh, these people's, people's opinion overlap. So let's take social democracy as an example. So uh, you see it's on the moderate left side of the spectrum and, we all, and, sin, and since it leans more left, that doesn't mean it cannot uh, have uh, more rightist opinions. Uh, for example, it embraces market capitalism, which is uh, traditionally a uh, right-wing uh, right, right uh, uh, economic system. What people fail to realize is that, uh, as, I mentioned, as I mentioned before, these opinions overlap. And um, many people just say, see two sides, but it's mo much more complex than that. You can have uh, one leftist opinion and one rightist opinion. That's perfectly okay and it's valid. Uh, but many people uh, will go to the extremes and uh, will pretty much uh, say that every leftist or rightist value is wrong. Uh, however, most people, even those who don't uh, really acknowledge it, do have uh, stances that may resemble the other side of the spectrum. 
the rightist, vol rightist values are more based on the conservation and tradition, conservation of uh, values and uh, just just traditions in itself, while the uh, leftist side uh, is more keen on progressivism. And um, that's the basics, what you need to know. However, there's also more to it since um, you cannot really, uh, it, uh, you cannot really just say that there's only two sides. Many people consider it consider it to be four sides of this political spectrum. I think many people are familiar with uh, this, this graph, for example, which um, makes a difference between authoritarianism and, uh, eco and uh, economic uh, policies, whether it is right or left, and that's how there are four sides. Uh, while there, this is the line spectrum, which, uh, as I mentioned before, says that there are uh, it just goes one way and another way, and there are no other ways, which is, I think, is very wrong since it's uh, very, it's basically simplifying the entire topic. And even scholars argue that this four side, uh, uh, this four side uh, spectrum isn't uh, adequate either. However, many people accept it since uh, it's it's. It's simple, yet still, uh, sh yet still uh, shows a lot of things. And now let's talk about governments and their forms. Well, what are governments, we may ask? Uh, they are uh, a body which, which is uh, made up of people who were uh, elected by uh, either a free and fair election or by uh, other means, such as violent means, or even by electoral fraud. Uh, a gov government uh, has three branches, the judiciary branch, the legislative branch, and the executive branch. And uh, they exercise their power through those three branches. Uh, a government is formed when uh, there's a, a a government can be either a majority or a minority government. Uh, it is based on whether the given party that uh, holds the government or po go holds the, uh, uh, the main position, uh, either controls most of the seats or, or, or only about uh, 30 of the seats uh, out of uh, 100 which is uh, really unrealistic, but for the sake of this argument, let's just say that. Uh, ba basically, if, that, if the latter happens, uh, they can uh, join in with other parties to create a coalition, which are often very fragi fragile, and, uh, and with, like, let, let's just look at Belgium, for example. They have been without a government for uh, almost a year. And it's because uh, they failed to form a government as uh, nobody received a major majority vote and the uh, winning party, which, uh, which got, uh, which got uh, a plurality of it, uh, did, not manage to did not manage to make a compromise with other parties in order to create a government. So it, it, it basically failed and a country that a government is basically uh, is basic, basically means stagnation and uh, economic downturn. So let's talk about forms of governments. Uh, there are many forms, even uh, in in history. Uh, there have been monarchies which were the most prevalent. Uh, there were the theocracies such as the papal states, and uh, nowadays you can you can say the Vatican City or uh, many considers Iran uh, uh, Islamic theocracy. There are also autocracies, which are mainly, govern which are mainly led by one person. Uh, you can say it's, it's a synonym to dictatorship. Uh, there are democracies, and of course, there were tyrannies. Um, but let's talk about what's prevalent today. Well, uh, since the fall of the Soviet Union, democracy has prevailed in most of the post-Soviet countries. 
and with the US being the sole superpower, uh, they could spread their democratic values around the world and therefore uh, democracy became a really prevalent uh, form of ideology and form of government lately. And Hungary itself is a parliamentary democracy, uh, which is led by the prime minister, which is, uh, which is actually uh, the opposite of what the US is like. Because for example, in the US, uh, you have the president as the, as the head of state, uh, not the prime minister. And uh, here the prime minister holds basically most of the powers while the president holds traditional or, traditional or only minuscule powers. This is the World Democracy Index. Um, it has been changing a lot lately. You can see this is Hungary in the middle. Uh, Hungary belongs to the flawed democracies, uh, flawed, belongs to flawed democracies, and uh, the point, its points keep deteriorating further and further. Uh, I would not like to get into this more as it is a very controversial topic, but uh, I would uh, like to talk more about uh, problems that uh, are prevalent in politics. The first one uh, which we all know about is corruption. Uh, corrup corruption, is, uh, corruption is everywhere. Corruption is basically a form of fraud uh, by a person, who, person with a powerful position, usually uh, by the form of bribery. Uh, it, it basically holds progress and re renders uh, economic, uh, economic successes useless. Uh, it, it, also, it is very abundant in nowadays society and uh, the World Corruption Index has also uh, uh, po posted, many, uh, po posted many data about how corruption is growing e even more in the 21st century uh, after a slight downturn after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, the future really seems uncertain. Another hot topic is authoritarianism, which, it, which is always being talked about in the news, uh, not really in Hungary, but rather in the, in the Western media with countries like India or Brazil or uh, even Mexico which were considered more or less democratic strongholds, uh, turning more uh, into an autocracy and, uh, and embracing a form of uh, government that uh, no, longer is consider, no longer considers many democratic values. And uh, it, it, basically, it basically also threatens uh, per individual freedoms. And uh, with that, the freedom of the press and freedom of speech, which uh, also continue to deteriorate in such states day by day. Now that we have talked about uh, uh, unlawful things, uh, let's talk about the basic law, which is constitutions. So what is a constitution? It is a group of fundamental, fundamental principles, uh, uh, which, are, uh, which is what the state is based on. Uh, it, is, uh, written, it, is, it is written so uh, the state can be governed uh, according to it, and, uh, for, and law is based on this one uh, single comprehensive document. There are two types of uh, constitutions, uh, coded and, and uncoded constitutions. Uh, coded constitutions are uh, very prevalent. Uh, they usually uh, uh, consist of one comprehensive, uh, one comprehensive document, while uh, uncoded ones uh, either consist of more or they are not as comprehensive. Uh, the UK or New Zealand has these types of uh, constitutions. Uh, the first uh, known constitution or law laws were uh, were found in ancient Sumer, 
which were Hammurabi's uh, laws uh, found on Hammurabi's tela, which is a uh, stone, stone slab with uh, basic laws written on it uh, in Sumerian language. Uh, it, it is a really fu fun find as uh, it uh, further enriches our knowledge about ancient civilizations and how th their state was governed and how they managed to ke keep uh, uh, such a civilization alive and, uh, and uh, how they managed to govern the people under under the state. Um, I brought some other fun facts. Uh, the longest ever written constitution is the constitution of India, which has 140,000 English words on it, while the smallest one is Monaco's, which is 3,800, which is the size of a, of a moderate essay. Now moving on. Let's see the Hungarian political evolution. I'm going to be talking a lot about history here. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, rather a uh, basic summary about uh, uh, systems that were prevalent in Hungary. Um, of course, in the medieval ages, um, uh, uh, monarchy was uh, the form of government in Hungary. Um, af after, we, after we lost our independence during the uh, Hungarian partition, when the uh, uh, country was partitioned into three parts, uh, the western side, aka also known as uh, Royal Hungary, managed to uh, keep its uh, mon monarch monarchy monarchist system afloat by uh, inviting uh, by uh, being subject to the Habsburg throne. Um, this, this is what became reality over the years. Uh, we didn't have much representation under the Habsburgs and only after the Compromise of 1867 uh, did, did we gain more uh, uh, political freedoms and uh, we could send more representatives into Vienna in order to discuss uh, bas basic or fundamental po political problems and issues going on in the country. Uh, however, we, it, uh, these, uh, th these efforts are not to be considered independent as they were still subject to the uh, Habsburg throne. After World War I, also known as the interwar period, there, there was uh, political turmoil in the entirety of the country. The first Hungarian Republic was proclaimed, but it was very short-lived. And uh, uh, proletariat dictatorship uh, under the leadership of Béla Kun uh, overtook its place, uh, which tried to embrace communism. However, with the uh, uh, with, with the Romanian troops sizing Budapest, uh, this uh, regime came to an end and a uh, new regime uh, which tried to bring monarchy back into Hungary, the Horthy regime uh, came into power. It, it was a really weird regime. Um, it was governed by governor, governor and former Ad Ad Admiral Miklos Horthy and the throne was vacant. It, while he was the de facto ruler of Hungary, de jure it was still a uh, monarchy and that's how uh, other countries considered it as. Uh, during the German occupation in World War II uh, in 1944, uh, a totalitarian uh, right-wing dictatorship were um, put into power as a puppet regime and after its fall, uh, the Second Hungarian Republic was proclaimed, which was also short-lived short -lived as uh, the Communist Party using the uh, infamous salami tactics um, tried to, uh, well, succeeded in um, putting down political opposition and became the uh, biggest party in Hungary, winning elections and proclaiming uh, a communist state in Hungary. 
uh, after the changes in uh, 1989 and 1990, communist rule finally came to an end and uh, the Third Hungarian Repo Republic was proclaimed, which continues to, uh, continues to the present day. In 1999, uh, Hungary joined NATO and in 2004, uh, it joined uh, the European Union, ending its, uh, ending its affiliation with the East and uh, trying to join uh, the Western nations. Uh, and that's about um, it about the Hungarian political evolution. Of course, there were, uh, th these are a lot more complex even nowadays. Uh, there have been many regime cha changes since the fall of communism with many political parties uh, uh, rose, to, rose to power and then immediately failed. And uh, as we all know, it, uh, Hungary is currently governed by the Fidesz KDMP coalition. Uh, and uh, the next parliamentary election will be uh, next year in 2022. So note that I have mentioned NATO and the EU. Uh, let's talk about international organizations. Uh, NATO and the EU uh, are not considered to be international organizations. They are considered to be regional organizations uh, since they are limited. They have uh, geographical limitations, but they fun function the same as an international organization. That's why it can be. Uh, it it can be brought to. It can be uh, mentioned in the same. Um, under the same umbrella. Uh, but let's talk about what are international organizations. Uh, they are created in order to uh, um, create a place for nations uh, for, that uh, cooperate and that uh, leads to cooperation and further cooperation and coordination. And uh, it helps numerous world problems and uh, tries to solve them using diplomacy instead of uh, instead of violent force. Uh, that that is, for example, uh, the purpose of the UN, which are aimed, uh, which which is aimed at resolving global global or minor or minor or regional conflicts. Uh, however, they are uh, often unsuccessful and. Uh, and many times uh, these organizations are frowned upon and uh, are told to be useless. Uh, orga other organizations such as the WHO or, the, or Interpol also, uh, also are considered to be international organizations. Um, uh, they help with the, uh, the latter one is the international crime database basically. Uh, um, which um, helps, uh, which aims to uh, make cooperation uh, between uh, country between countries uh, uh, a reality when uh, talking about crime and to uh, further lessen crime in the world. While WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, is aimed at uh, defeating defeating epidemics, pandemics, and uh, are uh, and uh, are involved in other uh, health issues that uh, plague the world. Uh, their uh, their purpose are basically um, bringing together everyone. Um, well, it hasn't really worked uh, so far. And that's why uh, there are regional organizations in place instead of international ones, as uh, many international organizations just do not seem to um, serve its purpose. Uh, th that's why NATO was created, for example, uh, to provide uh, mutual, co mutual cooperation and uh, def defense and security between its member nations. And, uh, what else can I say about international organizations? I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with uh, familiar with the UN or any other, such as the Council of Europe, or um, which one did I not say? Well, that's basically most of it. 
And that's the end of my presentation. I have listed all my sources here and thanks for tuning in. I hope I could help at least a small amount in, uh, in your preparation for the English final examination and have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.